Good morning, family. Watch Woman 65, Lisa Boyce. Um, thank you for your prayers. Um, this illness seems to be a little, it's getting a little better, but I got this going on in my lungs, and I have to go to the doctor tomorrow to see about that. I've had pneumonia twice, so I don't want to mess around with that at all. Um, I thank you for praying for me. Um, I seem to be better. I don't have a fever or anything like that. Here in Ohio, it's a total whiteout outside right now. But they've cleared up the streets over here where we are. Um, um, I want to go on and um, I want to I want to let you know that I am going to continue to expose false doctrine wherever it is, whether it be on YouTube or off of YouTube. I don't like false preachers. I don't like the way they teach doctrine and put confusion on people. It's wrong and is leading people to hell and thinking that they're saved and they're not. When I get into this, especially with millionaire, mega false teachers like Joyce Meyer. Um, I'm not making light of Joyce Meyer's her past because I know she was molested by her father. I don't make light of that. That can have a detrimental effect on your adulthood life. I know where she got a lot of her teaching from. She got it from Positive Confessions and the New Age Movement. Is she really helping people or is she sending people to hell? And that's what we're going to find out today because um, she's not really helping anyone. I'm just letting you know that she's sending you to hell and you're going to find out why when I'm done with this. Be careful. You have to use discernment. I will always say that. We are to do what Tim, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, and that is rightly divide the word of God. A workman showing himself approved. We have to rightly divide the word of God. So many people want to support people like her because they preach a warped message of the gospel that is not true. And because she's on the same level as you meaning abused or whatever you think that she's helping this is how the enemy comes in you have got to use the sermon and read the Bible for yourself and I don't mean her amplified Bible I had that Bible the amplified Bible is horrible that is one of the worst Bibles out there I can give you a whole list of others that are out there because I've read them all I've seen them all <laughs> But I'm going to give you a little background about Joyce Meyer. She was born in 1943, June 4th. She's married, has four children. She lives outside of St. Louis. I think she lives in Fenton, Missouri. <coughs> Excuse me. Jo Joyce Meyer runs to Joyce Meyer Ministries organization, JoyceMeyer.org. When examining the site statement of faith, we are glad to see uh, an uh, affirmation of the Trinity. Okay, that man is a sinner, that without Jesus, we can have no relationship with God. However, her statement of divine healing is another point altogether. Because there are so many groups out there that affirm that divine healing, and I'm talking about Pentecostal, uh, Hinduism, um, Seventh Day Adventist, all these cults. Think that when you're sick is from sin. Do not write me and tell me that's true. Because if anybody writes me and makes a comment and says, well, it is part of sin that you're sick, you will be blocked. I'm just letting you know. That is not true. There are some cases where illness can, well, sin can cause illness, but not in all cases. What they're saying here and what the Pentecostal movement says and the charismatic movement says is that you can never get sick. And if you do get sick, it's because you sinned. That is a false statement. That is heresy. I'm paraphrasing this in the Bible. I think it's in the, one of the Gospels 
The disciples, there was a sick man and the disciples asked Jesus, well, who sinned? Was it the parent, the wife, who, uh, who sinned? Jesus said, nobody. Nobody sinned. You don't have to have sin in your life to be sick. However, she believes that. The Joyce Meyer ministry takes in a lot of money. She travels in a private jet and has several million, multi-million dollar homes. Her uh, salary is not known. And a recent series of investigative articles in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch revealed that her ministry purchased for Joyce and her husband Dave a $2 million home a $10 million private jet and houses worth another $2 million for the couple's children who also work for the ministry. The articles also outline Meyer's recent personal purchase, including a $500,000 vacation home somewhere. I don't know where the vacation home is. It doesn't say, but that's the purchase of a vacation home. Now this was back in, I think 14 and 15. So she hasn't changed her financial statement that much. But I want to hit on her teaching. That's what I want to hit on. What she's teaching. Is she helping or is she hurting? And I'm going to tell you right now, she is hurting a millions of people out there because she's not presenting the gospel at all. I'm going to take a look at some of the teachings that she does and that she says. This article is very good on her. Now, it says, and I'm going to read this, it's necessary that we Christians use biblical discernment, like I said in the beginning, when supporting any preacher or teacher of the gospel. Okay? It is irrelevant whether or not we like that person. It doesn't matter how you feel about them. How you think they're a good speaker, what they say is uplifting, it doesn't matter. We have got to follow the Bible and what it says. And I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures here. Uh, Acts 17, 11. Now these were more noble minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scripture daily to see whether these things were so. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively, figuratively applied to myself and Apollos for your sakes. That in us you might learn not to exceed what is written in order that no one of you might become arrogant in behalf of one against the other. Listen to that again. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. Now these things, brother, and I have figuratively applied to myself and Apollos for your sakes, for your sakes, that in us you might learn not to exceed what is written, that you might learn not to exceed what is written in order that no one of you might become arrogant in behalf of one against the other. Listen very carefully, because I wrote this down. If the Bible says that even Paul was checked by scripture, and that we are not to exceed scripture's teaching, then aren't we obligated to judge what Miss Meyer says against the word of God? Not only her, but everyone else. That includes Kanye West. It is not enough just believe what he or she says, no matter how good the words are or how well he or she presents them. That's true. Everybody's following up against this man and everybody's following. A lot of people are still following this woman. Let's not be taken in by public figure who was confident, assertive, and appears to be biblical. Who was confident and assertive and appears to be biblical. 
Our duties as Christians include biblical discernment. Or you be taken by every wind of doctrine going to and fro. And you will be confused and you will end up in hell. You can only examine what these people are saying by comparing it to scripture. I said this before. And I'm talking about Kanye. If his testimony don't line up with the word of God, then he's lost. And I'll say that to anyone else. Now I heard his testimony. And not one time did I hear the gospel. I'm sorry. That's just fact. This is the word of God. This is what I have to go through. This is what I go by. I live by this. What Joyce Myers teach, for the most part, she's teaching a heresy. And I'm going to go by and I'm going to list about eight or nine things that she's saying that is wrong. And I'm going to give the response to him. I have all this written down. She preaches a positive message. But she also preaches heresy. And I'm going to give you several things that she said. Number one. Jesus stopped being the son of God. She said he could have helped himself up until the point where he had said, I command my spirit into your hands. At that point, he could do nothing for himself anymore. He had become sin. He was no longer the son of God. He was sin. That's what she said. That's exactly what she said. I'm going to give you the response to that. That is heresy. That is damnable heresy. Jesus didn't ever stop be being the son of God. Essentially, what she is saying is that Jesus stopped being divine. The eternal son. The second person of the Trinity. This is an attack on every nature of Christ, on the very nature of Christ. This is an attack on him. And it's a dangerous, false teaching. Now, I'm going to ask you again, is Joyce Meyer helping or is she hurting you? She needs to repent of that. That is wrong. She's adding the word She's adding to the word of God and placing it in the hearts and minds and listeners a false doctrine. Number two, Joyce Meyer says that Jesus was born again. She said the minute that the blood sacrifice was accepted, Jesus was the first human that was ever born again. This woman is so wrong, it's not even funny. She's totally wrong. Being born again means saved from the wrath of God that is to come. The wrath of God for a person's sins. You can look at Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. To have a new birth, John 3, 3. And to be regenerated, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Joyce is simply wrong biblically. She is totally off biblically. And like I said, she's getting a lot of her teaching from the positive confession movement. Now, I'm going to go into that later. It's not this uh, blabbing and grab it like the word of faith, but it's part of the Pentecostal movement. Uh, there was a pastor a long time ago named Charles Cl uh, Charles Capps. I think his name was Charles uh, Caps. He used to preach this. Whatever you say, you can have. I used to follow him. Terrible. Yeah, it's uh, so that's where she's getting a lot of her stuff from. Um, they say that um, Jesus lost his divine nature and went to hell, finished the atonement in hell and was born again. They say all that, the positive confession movement. I might do something on that this week because that's a very, 
that's a very that's a damnable uh, movement. That movement is terrible. Okay, all these movements out here that don't honor the grace of God is just it's it's just horrible. People, it's about the blood. It's about the blood that He shed on Calvary. It's a it's the blood. We are bought by the blood. Period. The blood of Jesus. Number three, she says that Jesus paid for our sins in hell. She said that he became our sacrifice and died on the cross. He did not stay dead. He was in the grave three days and during that time he entered hell. <coughs> Excuse me. Where you and I deserve to go because of our sins. He paid the price there. This is wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. This is definitely wrong. Jesus did not pay the price of our redemption in hell. He paid the price on the cross. <coughs> It's the blood of Jesus that saves us. It's the blood of Jesus that saves us. It's the finished work on the cross. When he said it's finished in John 1930, it was finished. Also look at the following verses, uh, Colossians 1.20, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven, Colossians 2.14, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of the of decrees against us. And which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way. Having nailed it to the cross. It is the blood. The blood of Jesus that takes away the sins. Hallelujah. First Peter 2.24 And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. On the cross. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds are we healed. That should make you shout right there. Number four, she says. Jesus went to hell in our place and was tormented. She said that Jesus paid the... Uh, paid on the cross and went to hell in my place. She said, then as God had promised on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. The scene in the spirit realm went something like this. God rose up from the throne, from his throne and said to the demon powers, tormenting the sinless son of God, let him go. Then the resurrection power of almighty God went through hell and filled Jesus. On earth, his grave where they had buried him was filled with light as the power of God filled his body. He was resurrected from the dead. The first, the first born again man. Again, I ask you, is she helping or is she hurting you? This is so dangerous, it's not even funny. She made this up. She totally made this up. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that um, Kenneth Copeland and the rest of them used something like this similar to this too. They made it up. There is nothing in scripture regarding what she just said. 
The Bible does not teach any such thing. However, it does say that Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth, Ephesians 4, 9. This can mean that Jesus was physically buried or that Jesus went to Hades to inform those who had already died about to, about who he was and what he did on the cross. Or it can be referring to his incarnation as to contrast it with his descending into heaven. But what she's saying is totally wrong. But there is no reason to ever, what she's saying about this is totally wrong. But there is no reason to ever believe that Jesus suffered in hell and finished the atonement work there. He finished the work on the cross through his blood, the blood of Jesus on the cross. Number five, if you don't believe Jesus went to hell, you cannot be saved. His spirit went to hell because that is where we deserve to go. There is no hope of anyone going to heaven unless they believe this truth. You see how she wraps this around? This is the this is control. This is mind control. She puts fear in people. And I know she puts fear in people because there are thousands of people at her conferences every year or all the time. I, I've seen it. So she's putting fear in everybody by telling them this. This is wrong. This is heresy. And she's a false teacher, period. It says here, this is an amazingly bad statement on her part. She is saying that you cannot be saved from your sins unless you believe that Jesus went to hell and we deserve to go there. This is a false modification of the gospel, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And states that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nowhere in scripture are we told to believe that Jesus suffered for us in hell. Or that we, we, or that he went there. This is heresy. In the worst form. Number six. This is one. The numbers, this is what I'm about to say now. Number six. Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis. I don't know whether T.D. T. D. Jakes have uh, adopted this one. But a lot of them have this one. We are little gods. Now that's definitely from the New Age movement. She said, I was listening to a set of tapes. This is old. <laughs> by one man and he explained it like this. This kind gets to the point. This kind of gets the point across. He said, why do people have such a fit about God cre uh, calling his creation, his creation? His man, not his whole creation, but his man, little God. She said, if, he, if he, he's God, what is he going, what is he's going to call them but the God kind. I mean, if you as a human being have a baby, you call it a human kind. If cattle has another cattle, they call it cattle kind. I mean, what is God supposed to call them? Doesn't the Bible say that we are created in his image? You see how Satan twists scripture? Listen to this. Now you suppose, now you understand, I'm not saying that you are a God with a capital G. That is not the issue here. So don't go trying to throw a stone at me or yell blasphemy at me. The Bible says it right here in John 10, 34. And Jesus answered, it is not written in your law. I say we are gods. So men are called gods by the law. This is what she said. This is what she said. Now,
this is a response to this. I'm going to try to have these clips. These are YouTube clips. I'm going to try to have these clips and how you can see this in the description box. What this is saying here, she goes on in this clip to quote John 10, uh, 10 34, where Jesus says to the Pharisees, you are gods, which is a quote from Psalm 82, 6, which is kind of a condemnation for the unrighteous judges. Psalm 82, 7 says, nevertheless, you will die like men. She then turned to Psalm 82 and went through it. The video ironically stopped there. So I don't know what she went on to say. But they love to use that verse. I've heard that verse with Kenneth Copeland a hundred times. He uses that. Creflo Dollar uses that a lot. That we are little gods. That is not true. We are sons and daughters to the Most High. Another thing she says, this is number seven. Joyce Meyer said that she is not a sinner. She said, I am not poor. I'm not miserable. I am not a sinner. This is a lie from the pit of hell. This is what I were. And if I still was then, Jesus died in vain. She said, if I am still a sinner, then Jesus died in vain. She said, if she's still poor, Jesus died in vain. She said, I'm going to tell you something, folks. I didn't stop sinning until I finally got it got it through my thick head, I wasn't a sinner anymore. And the religious world thinks this is that thinks that's heresy and they want to hang you for it. But the Bible says that I am righteous and I can't be righteous and be a sinner at the same time. Obviously she don't know the gospel of grace. She needs a lesson. That's theology 101. 1 John 1 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Notice that John the Apostle says we. He includes himself with sinners. Also, Paul in Romans 7 19, 20 through 24. For the good that I wish, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not wish. 20. But if I'm doing the very thing that I do not wish, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Question, is Joyce Meyer better in Christian character than John or Paul? No. Joyce fails to recognize her own sinfulness and so mistakenly denies her own sinfulness. We are sinners saved by grace, period. Now that teaching comes from pride. The spirit of pride. Number eight, the host of hell were literally on Jesus and were laughing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make this stuff up. She said they were having the biggest party they had ever had. They had my Jesus on the floor and they were standing on his back, jumping up and down and laughing. And he had become sin. Do you think God was pacing, wanting to put a stop to what was going on. 
all the hosts of hell were upon him, upon him, on up on up and down on him. The angels were in agony. All of creation was groaning. I don't know. I cannot tell you where she gets this stuff from. I have no clue. But this is totally this is totally made up. Maybe she has her own thing. I don't know. It is certainly not in the Bible. This is nowhere in scripture at all. And yet she has no problem teaching it. So again, I'm asking you, is she helping you or is she hurting you? Another thing, number nine. And I think this is the last one. Thank God. She gets revelation knowledge. She gets revelation knowledge. The Bible can't even find any way to explain this. That's what she says. Not really. That is why you have to get it by revelation. There are no words to explain what I'm telling you. I have got to trust. I have got to just trust God that he is putting it into my spirit like he will put it into yours. Revelation knowledge is what she's getting all this from. Again, is she helping you or hurting you? Is she on par with the apostles who receive revelation knowledge for real from God himself? If you hear this doorbell, this is a side note. You hear this doorbell? Israel's getting attacked. It's been going on and off since 3 o'clock this morning. We fly soon. And people like her... Don't let people like her change your mind about the grace of God. This woman is a heretic, not to mention a lunatic. She's crazy and she's teaching people the same thing. This is crazy. Nothing in the Bible that she's talking about. But she wants you to believe that it is. And she wants you to believe that she's getting revelation knowledge. She's getting knowledge, but it's not from God. It's from Satan himself. And she's bringing it on to you, thinking that you she's helping you. She's not helping you. She's hurting you. She's sending you to hell, just like the rest of the false teachers and preachers out there. Use discernment about these people. They'll be jumping up on the bandwagon every time somebody says, I got saved or I got something from the Lord. If it's not lining up with scripture, it's not true. I had to learn that and I learned it the hard way. Following up behind these people. That's all I got to say today about that. But I will come on this week with the positive confession movement. That's a whole nother movement in itself. I love you in the Lord. Have a nice day.